After a heartbreaking bankruptcy, the Reaction Engine's hybrid space plane design is back, and back in a big way with a new collaboration between the UK Space Agency, ESA, and Fraser Nash Consultancy to create a low Earth orbit space plane capable of carrying both cargo and humans to the space station and beyond with a single stage to orbit design that has been long pursued but never realized. But for the first time, not only is one country looking at exploring these types of options, but it's actually two. With the France Vortex program, they also are looking to achieve orbit with a reusable space plane design. A little bit different, not a single stage to orbit solution, but nevertheless, a reusable mini space shuttle design that will carry both humans and cargo to low Earth orbit at a time when the United States can no longer be depended upon to carry European cargoes and European missions to space. Space, this is the time for Europe to begin to capitalize on these types of opportunities. But is this something that's actually going to be realized? Or, like so many other European spaceflight ambitions, is this doomed to cancellation? We're going to find out in just a moment. Good afternoon and welcome to another Angry Bulletin. Today we're going to be talking about European spaceflight again, something that I've been intending to do for some time ever since I paid a recent visit to Spaceport Cornwall. Yes, indeed, I was there just a few weeks ago, mainly to visit a sick friend, but I had the opportunity to visit a company called Blue Abyss as well, who have the ambition of building an astronaut training facility at Spaceport Cornwall, an ambition that's been encountering a few governmental hurdles as of late. But that's not what this episode is about. It is instead about a recent announcement made by the UK military, together with the UK Space Agency and ESA, to restart a hypersonic space plane program that previously was being spearheaded by a company called Reaction Engines, a company that did not realize their ambitions of building a hybrid engine capable of reaching orbit and eventually faced complete bankruptcy and collapse. But this is not the end of the story for that technology, apparently, and Spaceport Cornwall is going to be on the leading edge of this new program called Invictus. At this point, I'm going to quote from an online periodical called UKDefenseJournal.org. Quote, a UK-led aerospace consortium has unveiled a bold new program to develop a Mach 5 capable reusable aircraft targeting its first flight by early 2031. Known as Invictus, the 7 million euro initiative is funded by the European Space Agency and aims to lay the groundwork for horizontal space launch using air-breathing hypersonic propulsion. Announced ahead of the UK Space Conference, the Invictus program is led by Fraser Nash and brings together major industrial and academic players, including Spirit Aerosystems and Cranfeld University, alongside a number of SMEs. Over the next 12 months, the team will complete a concept and partial preliminary design for the full flight system, including requirements, analysis, and development planning. Central to the project is the use of pre-cooled hydrogen fuel propulsion, a technology long championed by Reaction Engines Limited. So in other words, we're talking about a technology that's had a lot of work done on it in the past. We're not starting from scratch here. That firm's proprietary pre-cooler system allows incoming hypersonic airflow to be cooled before entering the engine, enabling sustained operation at extreme speeds 
far beyond the limit of conventional jet engines. Although reaction engines ceased operations in 2024 after failing to secure a financial lifeline, their legacy lives on. Fraser Nash has absorbed a team of reaction engine experts into its ranks, retaining vital knowledge from a decade of propulsion R&D and experimental testing. The collapse of Reaction Engines Limited dealt a major blow to the UK's hypersonic air vehicle experimental program, where it played a central role. Its work on the Synergetic Air Breathing Rocket Engine, or Sabre, and pre-cooler technology was key to the UK's ambitions for reusable hypersonic systems. Mach 5, five times the speed of sound, is significantly faster than the SR-71 Blackbird or the Concorde, of course. Previous REL tests validated pre-cooler integration with jet engine systems under such conditions, marking a critical proof of concept. Hypersonic flight is not just the next frontier of aerospace. It is the gateway to a new paradigm of mobility, defense, and space access that Dr. Tomaseo Gidney, head of mechanical development at ESA. With Invictus, Europe is seizing the opportunity to lead in technologies that will redefine how we move across the planet and reach beyond it. By mastering reusable air-breathing propulsion, we are laying the foundation for aircraft that take off like planes and reach orbit like rockets, revolutionizing both terrestrial and orbital transportation. Fraser Nash Managing Director Sarah Wilkes said, quote, Invictus is an exciting opportunity to provide advanced technology for space and advanced capabilities in defense. With strong industry support and in deep engineering and aerospace expertise, including Fraser Nash colleagues with a decade of propulsion experience, we have the right ingredients to make this ambitious vision a reality. Tony Forsyth, head of space technology at the UK Space Agency, Agency said, quote, this exciting project made possible by our investments in the European Space Agency has significant potential to build on advanced cooling and hypersonic propulsion technology developed by UK engineers over many years. We look forward to seeing how the work develops and the opportunity it presents for boosting economic growth and national security. And after a disappointing first flight out of Spaceport Cornwall with Virgin Orbit, Spaceport Cornwall is finally getting another opportunity. This is a press release from the Spaceport dated yesterday. Quote, Spaceport Cornwall has been selected to join the UK Ministry of Defense's transformational hypersonic technologies and capability development framework, or HTCDF, positioning the Cornwall-based facility as a key contributor to Britain's sovereign hypersonic technology capability development. The seven-year, one billion pound framework brings together 90 organizations from across industry and academia to rapidly develop advanced hypersonic defense capabilities for the United Kingdom. Spaceport Cornwall's inclusion recognizes the unique combination of capabilities offered by the facility, including horizontal launch capabilities, comprehensive operations facilities, and its strategic location at Cornwall Airport Newquay adjacent to RAF St. Morgan military base. And I probably mispronounced the name of that RAF base. That's very embarrassing considering how many times I've been out to that part of the country. Anyway, the HTCDF is designed to accelerate capability development through to technology readiness level nine, enabling rapid progression from early research through to operational deployment. This agile approach addresses the evolving nature of modern defense challenges challenges and ensures the UK maintains its technological edge. The framework aligns with the government's strategic defense review and supports the UK's commitment to spend 2.5% of GDP on defense by 2027. And my longtime colleague Ross Hulbert, the head of engagement at Spaceport Cornwall, had this to say, quote, this is a defense
defining moment for Spaceport Cornwall and demonstrates our commitment to supporting Britain's defense capabilities. Our unique position as the UK's first licensed spaceport combined with our world-class facilities and proximity to both civilian and military aviation infrastructure makes us ideally suited to contribute to this vital national capability. But as I mentioned earlier in the video, the UK is not the only country pursuing these ambitions. France is doing the same. And I'm gonna go ahead and quote from an article entitled, They're Coming for Orbit. France's ultra-fast Vortex plane nears first flight in shock bid for space supremacy. Quote, in a groundbreaking move set to redefine aerospace capabilities, France has unveiled its ambitious Vortex project. A hypersonic space plane aimed at securing the nation's strategic dominance in space exploration and defense. In recent years, the aerospace industry has been at the forefront of technological advancement, with countries vying for supremacy in the skies and beyond. Among these, France is making significant strides with its ambitious Vortex project, a space plane that promises to redefine the boundaries of exploration and defense. Developed by Dassault Aviation and supported by the French government, this project is seen as a critical component in maintaining and enhancing France's position in the global aerospace arena. As plans for the Vortex unfold, it becomes clear that this initiative is not just about national pride, but also about strategic necessity. The Vortex project is not just another aerospace initiative. It represents a bold leap into the future of space exploration and defense. Announced during a session at the French National Assembly, the project's short-term goals and objectives have been laid out with precision. The primary aim is to develop a space plane that can reach Mach 12, which is approximately 7,950 miles per hour at sea level, making it one of the fastest vehicles ever conceived. This speed is crucial for its intended suborbital missions, allowing for rapid deployment and versatility. The French Ministry of Armed Forces, under the leadership of Sébastien Lecarnu, has emphasized the strategic importance of the Vortex, stating that space is the gauge of power. With investment of around $33 million from the government and additional funding from Dassault Aviation, the development of a demonstrator is underway. This financial commitment underscores the belief in the project's potential to enhance France's capabilities in space. The development of the Vortex involves overcoming numerous technical challenges, particularly in the areas of hypersonic guidance, thermal protection, and maneuverability. As the space plane is expected to travel at speeds exceeding 12,000 kilometers per hour, ensuring stability and control is paramount. The goal is to validate these critical capabilities by 2027, paving the way for subsequent phases of the project. Notably, the Vortex will be an unmanned vehicle operated remotely by Dassault. This approach minimizes risk while enabling extensive testing of the space plane's features. The emphasis on reusability is also significant as it mirrors the capabilities of other leading aerospace programs such as the American X-37B and various Chinese systems. As Emmanuel Chiva, the General Delegate for Armament, highlighted having a reusable space plane is essential to secure access to space given the potential denial of access by other powers. In other words, probably the United States. The Vortex development is structured into four distinct phases, each building on the success of the previous one. The initial phase, Vortex D, involves a one-third scale demonstrator planned for a 2027 launch. This will be followed by Vortex S, a two-third scale, and subsequently Vortex C and Vortex M, which will introduce cargo and manned versions respectively. There we go. So yes, a manned version is on the books. Each phase is designed to progressively enhance the capabilities of the space plane, ultimately leading to a fully operational system. This phased approach not only allows for incremental advancements, but also provides the flexibility to adapt 
to new challenges and technologies as they emerge. The end goal is to position France among the leading aerospace nations, maintaining its competitive edge and avoiding obsolescence. However, reliance on a US-provided electron rocket for the initial demonstrator, so Rocket Lab is the one carrying out the initial test, underscores the complexities and interdependencies within the global aerospace industry. Although I think it'd be best to keep in mind that even though Rocket Lab is an American company, it is founded mostly in New Zealand, so their objectives might be a little different. The article concludes thusly, quote, The Vortex project is a testament to France's commitment to advancing its aerospace capabilities and securing its place among the world's leading spacefaring nations. By investing in cutting-edge technology and fostering strategic partnerships, France is poised to achieve significant breakthroughs in space exploration and defense. As we look to the future, one must ask, how will these advancements shape global power dynamics and what new frontiers will they open for humanity? So we don't just have one country or one European organization pursuing these types of goals. We actually have two competing countries. I think it's highly likely that at least one of them are going to realize their ambitions and catapult Europe into low Earth orbit competition. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like like and subscribe. Also, once again, thank you so much for helping me attain my Australia trip financial goal. Without you guys, I wouldn't be going at all. Thank you so much. And if you'd like to support this channel further, you can become a Patreon supporter. A $3 membership is actually better than a $30 one-time contribution. And if I can get to 1% of my subscribers being Patreon supporters, I'll never have to do fundraising again. So thanks again for watching, and until next time, stay angry about space.